recently on Voices in the Wilderness. My co-host, Christine Johnson, and I had the privilege of talking with biologist Dr. Dennis Venema. Topics included evolution and Christianity. Does modern science conflict with the Bible? What is the nature of Adam and Eve? Many other topics. The full video will be released in just a week or so. Until then, enjoy this excerpt. All right, so in our current pandemic crisis, how has some of the anti-scientist, anti-science views of certain segments of the Christian church fed conspiracy ideas or other negative consequences? Yeah, it kind of seems to be a bit of a package. If you, if you already think that scientists are attempting to deceive Christians by having, you know, this sort of masquerade and hiding evidence for creation and propping up evolution, which is this, you know, unsupported idea. You know, if that's the narrative that you think is true about scientists, then it's not much of a stretch to go beyond that and say, oh, and then they're also hiding stuff about COVID or they're trying to, you know, get me microchipped or whatever. So it's kind of an unfortunate, I mean, I made a comment on Facebook a while ago that I think you might have seen where I said something to the effect of, you know, up until this point, you know, science denial among Christians hasn't really, you know, it hasn't been life threatening. And now we're in a situation where it actually could be life threatening. You know, if a large number of Christians don't do social distancing or don't take appropriate precautions, then more people will be infected and a certain number of those people will die. I did have an appropriate pushback by somebody um, whom I respect on Facebook who said, you know, Christian attitudes to climate change also have deadly consequences. It's just that, you know, it's just at a slower scale, right? But, and, you know, so fair point at that point there too. But in the short term, we haven't before seen this kind of impact where the anti-science sentiment of the church in general suddenly has like real world right now immediate impact on maybe who in your congregation might live or die because of your willingness to, to isolate or to take this seriously. So yeah, it's, it's an unfortunate, it's an unfortunate um, example of how anti-science behavior can have really negative consequences, especially when as Christians we're called to be um, the people who are willing to sacrifice the most for, the, for others. We're supposed to put others before ourselves. We're supposed to love our neighbors. And understanding and promoting good health practices around COVID is part of loving your neighbor. So it's, it's, a, it's you know, Christians, if anything, we should be the ones who are known for doing this more so, you know, you know we should be an example in our willingness to, to lay down our rights for the betterment of other people. So what do you think about the potential of a vaccine? How soon do you think that that can be ready? Um, do you see many Christians pushing back on a vaccine for some of those same anti-science reasons? What, what are your thoughts? Uh, Francis Collins, if you follow Francis Collins on his blog, which I would recommend that you do, um, he's not hard to find. He's the director of the National Institutes of Health uh, for you guys down there in the States. And it's wonderful that we have a man of, of integrity and solid faith and compassion in such a position of influence um, and someone of, of, you know, deep conviction. So he has an article up a oh, couple, like a week ago or so now that sort of lays out all the different avenues and all the different approaches that are being, uh, tried for a COVID vaccine. We are going to have this vaccine sooner than probably any other vaccine in history. One of the reasons for that is that because we're trying so many different, uh, approaches to make a vaccine, but like Francis talks about in his article, we're also ramping up production for all of them before we have evidence that any one of them might be the best one, the most you know useful one. So the idea is is that not all they're, they're not all going to go into production, but we're going to do the groundwork beforehand, such that any one of them that does show good benefit could be put into production very very quickly. We're not usually the usual process is you kind of go through clinical trials, you find one that's useful, and then you begin the scale up 
to try to produce it at a large number, at a large amount. And we're bypassing that. So that is going to greatly reduce the amount of time. We've also seen some good evidence in the last few weeks that people who have been infected with COVID have a, a good immune response to it. And that's the same sort of immune response that a vaccine would be intending to elicit. So that's good news. We've also seen um, evidence that um, some individuals may have some T cells that have an ability to recognize uh, COVID, even if someone hasn't been exposed to COVID before. So perhaps from a related coronavirus or something like that. Now, that also probably explains why the disease has a different impact on different people. But anyway, all of that is to is good. These are good signs to suggest that an immune system can have a good, healthy response, a good, robust response to this virus, and therefore probably also to a vaccine. So I'm hopeful, and we'll probably have a useful vaccine more quickly than we have for many other things, just because we're ramping it us up and we're trying to do it so quickly. Unfortunately, we're also already seeing um, people in the states primarily who are, who are already campaigning and basically saying even if a vaccine is available there's no way i'm gonna to take one another thing to think about there is that vaccines are like are one of the best public health innovations that humans have ever thought up and when i take a vaccine even if i say i'm not in a very high risk category maybe i'm in a low risk category for covid if i can take that vaccine I am doing I, part of the reason why I'm doing so is for is because of my love of others for my love for neighbor. There are some people who can't be vaccinated. There are some people who have weakened immune systems. And if I take the vaccine and lar and large numbers of people take the vaccine, then what that does is it helps create that herd immunity that protects the people who aren't able to be vaccinated. So that is something that Christians should feel motivated to do for the good of others as well, especially when it's such a safe safe uh, procedure like the the risk of complications with vaccines is incredibly incredibly low it's one of the best public health measures that we've ever come up with